What's up guys, Ben Clark here for Adaptive Form. Here today with my mate Sam. And we're just gonna have a conversation, show you how, well, tell you how we met, and uh, see where it goes from there, really. So um, I hope you enjoy. All right. Um, so when we met was, what, 2010? Was it two for that? Yeah, 2010, so that's when I had my accent. Mad. So eight years, well, coming up to the years later in the year, which seems like so forever. Been, yeah, so I'd only had my accident three years before that. Yeah. And I felt like a veteran. <laughs> I felt like I knew everything then. I felt like after my first year, I'm like, yeah, I've had a year now. Yeah, 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 yeah I know exactly what spinal cord injury is all about. Yeah, I'm solid, I, I, yeah. I know. Yeah, that's mad. So I was, I was training you, so I'd done my, my PT training. Mm. And yeah, you were, you were my patient. Yeah. Which now seems like the most ridiculous thing in the world. <laughs> I remember, I remember getting like the, you get like a patient profile. Yeah. And everyone comes in and it's like, you know, so-and-so he's done this, 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 and this. Nine times out of 10, so-and-so has done nothing fitness wise. Yeah. And then you came in and it was like, you know, Ben's a, like, was an Olympic hopeful, Commonwealth hopeful. And I'm thinking, what, what am I going to do? <laughs> I like this guy knows him. And then you come down and we, we started talking and I instantly knew that I was just going to be like, let, we're just going to be having a laugh. Yeah. I said, there, was no, there was nothing I was going to teach you that was ever going to be new knowledge or new information to you. Yeah, yeah. So it was just making it was for me it was a good hour to have a laugh. Yeah, it makes a change from uh, it makes a change from someone that just doesn't know anything. Doesn't want to be there. For yeah. Stuff. Um, and yeah, I knew that we were going to achieve something. Yeah. And I think we achieved. I think we achieved quite a lot in the time that you were. Yeah, definitely. Like having yeah. you there as somebody who. As you said, three years in, yeah. you say you're a vet, like you're way more of a veteran than I was at that point. <laughs> I was only like three months in, maybe like not even that. Yeah, yeah. So, so how long did you, you how long were you on bed rest for? Uh, eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of standard, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much standard. I persuaded them to get me in the pool as quickly as possible. I remember that. I remember yeah. being part of that conversation. Yeah, because like, I was like, I'll be fine. Be fine. I can swim. Yeah. Come on, breath. <laughs> Did we take you down? Cause I think we took you down in your bed as well a couple of times, didn't we? I went down in my bed to look at the pool. Yeah. <laughs> which, sounds, I remember, yeah. which now sounds really sad, but I was like, I need the pool in my life. So no, much. yeah, but that was like, that was for you, that was your driver. Yeah. I, was like, I think, yeah, I was like, I want to be able to swim again. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, that definitely helped you. I think everyone, everyone has a driver and needs a driver in yeah, that definitely. situation. Yeah. But I, yeah, I remember just because it was it was me, Sam, head physio, yeah. and a couple of others, and I remember sitting there and everyone just being like, "It's too, you can't, just, we can't do it yet." We were like, "But this, he needs it. We're going to expect like the best kind of recovery from him. He needs something that's going to yeah. excite him and get him to push forwards." Yeah, and that was definitely it. Yeah, makes sense. I didn't realise any of that happened. <laughs> no, no, I, I, to be fair, mate, I completely forgot it. And then you put... Start talking about those situations, yeah. yeah. I just completely didn't even remember yeah. it. So, um, to give you more of a background on, like, what we're talking about, um, when I had my injury, I first of all was in poor hospital, where I did quite a bit of, like, about a month of recovery there, just lying in bed, waiting to have my uh, operation, having my operation at Southampton, going back to Paul. Then after that month, you moved to the spinal centre, and... That's where Sam was working. working. Yeah, so um, we, what, what was your sort of role? So my, my role was a fitness trainer. So we would have guys that would come in and depending on where, where they were fitness-wise, um, where they were on their rehabilitation, what their goals were. So we had some guys that needed to lose weight in order to be able to function properly. Yeah. Um, we had guys that were maybe struggling with transfers, Mm. Uh, guys like yourself who were fit before that just needed to get their levels back up and yeah. had, had their own goals and aspirations but generally my, my role was general fitness in mm. order I, I would I would help you help you gain your fitness levels back up in order to you for you to get the most out of your physio sessions yeah so and that was that was quite quite hard because a lot of guys wanted to do the gym exercises but they didn't want to do the, the physio stuff. 
Yeah, that makes um, sense because gym is like, hey, people love gym. People, yeah. But physio never feels like you're really you achieving anything. Like, you, you know, you, are, you do. Yeah. You know, some physio sessions you could have been doing half an hour standing, and then um, in a half an hour just pressure them. Yeah. And you don't feel like you've you've achieved anything. But yeah. whereas if you if you if you've done half an hour in the gym, forty five minutes, and you can say, oh, I've lifted, I did thirty k thirty kilo. I don't know thirty yeah. kilo bench press or that there's a there's, there's a numerical yeah there's a numerical satisfaction goal, yeah, yeah. from it you're chasing that not like the numbers or the yeah you, yeah you, know. you have that yeah so I was like and I was always I was always having meetings and you know the, the physios would always say that you need to have a word with such and such because you know by the time they get to our sessions the physio sessions they're too tired yeah so there was a lot of juggling around and a lot of uh, yeah, just a lot of um, yeah, just a lot of juggling and sort of, what's the word? Um, the balance. Of, yeah, yeah, balance and uh, oh my days! <laughs> what the fuck is the word? Um, <laughs> no. It. it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's all right. Cool. Um, yeah. So um, Sam is a, a spinal cord injury himself. We actually did it in fairly similar ways. I did it in the sea. Sam did swimming pool. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to so, say swimming pool. Do you want to talk about? Uh, that? Yeah. So yeah, talk about all that, that stuff. Yeah. So I was nineteen. Um, I was at a house party. I'd done. Uh, been working in Peru for a month before doing telecom installations. Um, came home, uh, just found out that I was going to get paid time and a half for every day I was there. So went to a house party, did all the celebrating, I was like, yeah. no, expecting that. Um, had a little bit too much to drink and uh, at the party was a swimming pool um, and it was only about four foot deep and I dived in, hit my head on the bottom, um, broke C6, fractured C5 and C7. Um, I was incomplete and I spent, I think I spent two days in intensive care. Um, I wasn't fixed, so I had no operation, so I spent another three months in bed rest, being five man turns, and I think I eventually left hospital eight months, eight months later. But I got, I was lucky, I was incomplete, um, I still have function of my legs, although not very strong. Um, still got a bit of core stability. Uh, my right hand is okay, my left hand is totally shot. Triceps are quite weak, like you've got quite good triceps. Yeah, because I'm incomplete myself, but mm. with spinal cord injury, you literally don't know what you're gonna get. Like there's things yeah. that you're like almost think, certain, like almost certain, like yeah. there's certain levels because the nerves come out at different levels. Like nearly, I mean, there's quite, most ones I've seen have got shoulders. Yeah, like, I think yeah. I think that's. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of a given. Yeah, you're but like if you're like shoulders. a complete, like you probably have like half of your biceps maybe, like yeah. some barely have even that. Like uh, no tricep function whatsoever, um, no hand function, nothing below yeah. like nipple level basically. So for myself, it's um, the thing I've got back is I've got quite a lot of my upper back is all right and yeah. i've got triceps so whatever that means in terms you've got of quite a bit of chest as well haven't you uh one side of my chest yeah, yeah i've got same, yeah. one like my left is like yeah my, mine's normal, right but this the bottom part of my right is like oh no i don't want to work yeah yeah no i've, I've got the same so my 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 right side my right chest side of my chest uh is could be pretty normal mm. um and but my left side it's it's just the top half so yeah i could literally draw a line here. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. much. Have you seen, have you yeah. seen the picture of the uh, of the guy that's got no pet? Yeah, the bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I'd imagine if if I if I yeah. continue to train, I'm not a trainer <laughs> anymore. I think if I took some steroids, yeah, took some steroids. Yeah, I look like the hunchback of Notre Dame. If I took <laughs> steroids, I'd be so warm here. Yeah, awful. But that's that I feel like if, yeah, if I train properly, I feel like that. You'd yeah, be yeah, noticeable. Yeah, we'd eventually get to that. Mm. Point, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But, um, yeah, so, like, what happened, like, 
you know, you had your eight months recovery and then you were out in the world. I was out in the big, bad, scary world. There was a lot yeah. of, I mean, I ended up, I did, I, I spent a good couple of months trying to be the guy I was before I had my accident. Yeah. Trying to keep up with the boys, my friends, it, and I struggled with that. I, I went straight into a relationship as well. And, and there was a lot of, a lot changed in such a short period of time. Yeah. I moved into a place on my own. and I think I spent a lot of time making a lot of mistakes. Um, tried to, tried to you know, find my, my sort of grounding and finding the sort of things I wanted to do. I thought about yeah. teaching. And, you know, someone suggested mentoring. You know, we mm. talked about it before. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't, I didn't, at the time, I didn't feel like I had the confidence to be able to do something like that. So I thought, you know, I used to be quite fit, played a lot of rugby, surfed, swam a lot, not to any sort of great yeah, levels, but I was always doing, active, I was yeah. always very active. So I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll, I'll go into training. Um, and then that's how I, I, how I got into the job at, at Salisbury. Yeah. Um, and that was great for me um, on, a, on a personal level for my own development. So sort of three years passed where I was up and down. And I, I, I got diagnosed with depression and I, I, I went for a real, sort of really bad stage of my life. Um, and going through or being able to go back to the, to the helping guys yeah. Being able to like impart the very little knowledge that I had helped with my sort of recovery process. Yeah. Um, but at the same time as well, I, I remember being able to have chats with guys and you know, some days I would go and walk it. Mm. And I used to find that really difficult because you know, everyone, the first thing everyone wants, to, everyone wants to do is start walking again. Yeah, and I'd feel like I was kind of rubbing it in their faces occasionally. Yeah, and be like, "Well, you know, you, you've had your accident, but I can walk." Yeah, and it wasn't like that at all. But I, I used to find it really difficult, so I started using my chair less and less when I was at work. Yeah, to the point where I stopped using it entirely. Um, and I use even now actually, like ten, ten and a half years later, ten years later, I I use my chair more now mm. than probably I've ever done before, but. That's not, it's not because I, it's, not, it's because using the chair is easier. Yeah. And it's not so much, I don't, I don't see myself as disabled anymore. I just, my, my chair is now, and my girlfriend said it, she said, you, you, your chair is more like a bike. Yeah. That's, it's, it's a vessel to get you from A to B. It's not. A little you, bit easier than. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, you know if I'm walking. I've got I've got my crutches, so my hands are full. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm no joke. A strong gust of wind, and I'm struggling. I have to stop. I, I can't move in it yeah. because it sets my balance off. So if I'm in my ch if I'm in my chair, I can, you know, I, I can tidy up, I can carry stuff. Yeah, I'm a lot quicker. I don't get tired. It's you know, like now my knees are starting to hurt. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's. <laughs> It's ridiculous, but you get, yeah, you get used to it, don't you? So yeah, you have to adapt. Yeah, which is to <laughs> you adapted before. Yeah. So yeah, but I mean, I think that I think that is literally it. I think that you do adapt to perform. Yeah. And the I thing think is, like, I remember in hospital they said that you don't really start living your life until like five years after your accident. Yeah. Because that's how long it takes. It does to get over. What happened in a split second? Yeah, it's crazy. I, it's weird, and you know that, like you said about like depression, like that's. I, 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 I mean, I didn't sense. get it. Depression. Yeah. Like I, I was fine, but I was like, that's weird that I didn't get it. Like it's it totally is. normal. Yeah. To, like that. Like I'm the freak of nature that didn't get to it. It's good depressed. though. Because, I mean, you've also kept yourself. You've always had like you've always had a goal. As long as I've ever known you, you've always been pushing for something new. Yeah. And you've always had something. To guide, you. I didn't have, I didn't have anything like that, mm. and I, I was all of a sudden, kind of just treading water, 
and that's yeah. when I went down the hill because I was just I had no I had no goals I had no aspirations all I could see was spending the rest of my life not being able to do the things I wanted to do yeah and yeah it took me a few years and I think yeah I think you're right five years was is the right sort of thing yeah the, the, thing, the weirdest thing I find for m myself is how young I was when I had my son. You were just, how old were you? I was 19. You just, were, yeah, I turned 20 like a month afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. So we were both, I was 19 as well. And I thought I was like, I thought oh, I was yeah, a big I, man I, I was thought, growing up. And, yeah, the same for me. Like, I was, you know, wanting to be a professional swimmer, training yeah. like 40 hours a week, thinking I could probably get any girl I wanted. <laughs> do, <laughs> and, whatever. And do whatever I want sort yeah. of thing. And then it's just sort of like, oh, wait, no, now you've got to spend eight months in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> but, and then figure it out when you get out. <laughs> that, there's a lot of figuring out. Yeah. It? Like, you, like when we were in hospital, we had, like, you know, they teach you how to live. Do the standard yeah. rehab yeah. stuff. Yes. But when yeah. you get out, like, wow, there's a lot of learning. That's <laughs> huge amounts yeah. of learning. Like, for me, I went straight back to swimming. Pretty, and, and I was, like, training. Um, like, before I was training, like, four years ago, I couldn't do that anymore. And, oh, you know, I was yeah. down to, like, five hours a week 